Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to The Witcher Circus, and today is Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day for everyone that is watching this video, and let's get straight into the matches. So today we're going to be doing one hour of Pout Couple, since it's Valentine's Day, right, so we might as well play the Flagellant and the Shieldbreaker, so it's going to be one hour of Winter, of winter Bliss duty, since I've heard that some people do quite like me playing this team, we're going to be doing some more of it, so today we're playing against Vasily, that, that looks kind of Polish, maybe not, I'm not entirely sure of it. They have a very decent team here, they're the darkest opponent, and they have something that looks very very tanky, Flagellant Crusade, very nice set upon both of them, and they do not have regen on this Flagellant, so they would kind of have a rough time against Mark teams, I feel, but at the same time they have a... They have a Narbles back there, so this might be a little bit rough. I'm gonna start off with the Battle Belt, of course, even though they don't have any dodge. I feel like Battle Belt's always a good play, because this team really needs the accuracy. Shieldbreaker has base 185 accuracy on that other case, and you know, Flagellant has base uh, 85 accuracy on the, on the Exanglade, so you really need those accuracy buffs if you wanna hit uh, jack shit, if you uh, don't mind be swearing a little bit. So, they are gonna go for the minus stress dealt on my backline. That's not too bad, but that's not the actual threat. The actual threat is Reign of Sorrows. It's gonna it's gonna hurt like a truck. Hopefully I get a few dodges. That is that is the plan, that is the hope, that is a dream, but it's probably not going to work. What I am gonna go for though is since I'm probably not gonna be dropping rejuvenating vapors, I'm just gonna go ahead and go faster immediately. Into a crit 18, amazing. My my point doing that was to just hopefully get a dodge, because they still don't have any accuracy buffs, and uh, hopefully give myself a crit, get a, get a bit more dodge, and then the Reign of Sorrows probably wouldn't hit me. But what this has resulted in is my Antiquarian probably gonna have a very, very quick death today, <laughs> which isn't good for me at all. What I'm gonna try doing is just hurting my Flagellant, and then I can eventually drop a Redeem on her and things will be a little bit better. Yeah, having to deal with the Battlefield Manager is going to be pretty rough for my opponent's side. I wonder how this matchup is going to go. Like, Manticorean being this hurt is definitely not good, but she can stay alive with take cover and all those shenanigans, because my opponent might have a few abilities that hit my backline, but they don't have any confirmed death blues or anything of the like, so I'm not overly concerned about this. Now I need to make a few decisions. Um, I do need to make a few decisions. I feel like Harvest isn't too bad here, even though, you know, the Repulse might just... Um, might make my life miserable. I feel like Harvest isn't too bad, because I'm thinking Harvest into Expose. Or what if I just Expose into Harvest instead? Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's put my opponent in check. I'm gonna do an Expose on Crusader. I get a crit on it, which is very cool. Getting a crit at the ability that makes your opponent takes more crits, which means you're gonna take even more crits, because now I get the debuff for sure, and now there's an extra 20% chance there. I wonder if... No, they don't have the guard here. This is a very cool team that they have, not even running a guard, because why would you run a guard with only 70% stun resistance with the mana arms that's here to drop retribution? Like, you just wouldn't have enough time to do everything. They do go for the command buff, so they can actually hit my character, which makes a lot of sense, if you ask me. And right now, I probably won't drop to this store, but... Aha! Here comes the damage and the crit buff, so this punish is a 42% crit chance, so very, very likely. And I might not get the bleed, because I don't have spiked bats, but I do get the blight, so that's very good. Of course, I still don't have the finale, no, because, you know, it's definitely not enough, but now it is. <laughs> now it is! <laughs> I have enough damage for the finale now, if I want to go for it. The question is, do I? Oh boy, that hurts. Ouch, that really freaking hurts. Um... Do I want to drop the finale? That is the question. Do I even have enough damage with that extra protection? Nah, there's no way I don't, right? There's no way I don't. Yeah, 48, let's just do it. The reason I'm doing it is because the Arbalest is a healer and she's very annoying. And if you get a character advantage with Flange on Shieldbreaker, I think I should be okay here. Now, the biggest problem is that I'm about to lose my backline because suppressing Fire Rain of Sorrows is, might just get two kills, or at least very, very close to it. So yeah, that's that's not going to be too good, but one thing I can do is I can just drop a Protect Me on the Flagellant. Or, oh, they're thinking about it, they're going to go Bola Punish, that's crazy. They do enough damage with the Bola, of course, and they're going to go for a Punish as well. They're going to go for the 20, that's very interesting if my opponent's going for such a for such a greedy play. Not really greedy, but, you know, definitely risky, definitely risky. Uh, I feel like just going Suppressing Fire of Swords would have been better for them, though. Well, let's, be, let's be completely honest here. What should I do? Should I do you or do you? Um, 
I will have guard for two rounds. I'm probably gonna drop a redeem. After which, what's gonna be my offense? I'm not entirely sure, but I'm gonna do this. If my fire drone dies here, it's safe to say I'll lose the match. But if he stays alive, I can drop a redeem on the antiquarian, and then things will be all right for me, right? So 20% chance, does it go through? Wow. Wow, not even a finisher, and that's gonna be that's gonna be a loss for starters. Wow, that is that is really unlucky. God damn, 20%. Well my opponent saw it, my opponent went for it, and they took it. Who should I keep playing here? Honestly, there's no way that I can kill this flash once with all the healing he has left, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for a Hail Mary pull on the Arbalist, it's a 20, and after it fails we're gonna surrender, so GG's to my opponent, and we're gonna take the first match. After a very lucky 20%, but you know, such is the way to put your circus, you win some and you lose some. So let's go on for match number 2. Alright, and here we go for a match number 2, so this time we're playing against Damon, which is <laughs> Damon, <laughs> it looks like Damon, but it's, it's Rose Weird. Yeah, and it's another platform with Crimson Hook Reign of Sorrows. Is this just the state of Butcher Circus um, 2023? I think it is, just Flatland versus Flatland. All the freaking time. Alright, I do have a chance, so I can probably give that a little bit of a counter. So my Shieldbreaker is here to go for a puncture and that occultist, but the question is if I want to do that immediately. The answer is no, my opponent has dodge, so I'm gonna drop the battle belt first while I can before a cute little demon's pull gets dropped onto my chest, or I would very much not appreciate it. It's actually a 100% hit chance. Yeah, it's a 95, literally, just barely a 95, so it's never gonna miss. So my opponent here has definitely a strange team, but without an abomination. Usually you'd have an abomination here instead of a houndmaster, and then you'd have a very nice strange team, and you could put whatever character you want in the back line. But let's no, they have something a little bit different today. They're gonna go for the immediate command so they can start hitting my characters. That doesn't make sense. This Hound's area is gonna hurt. It is gonna hurt quite a bit. Now, how do I want to deal with this? I could go for a pull on the Occultus, but I'm not sure that's the best move. I might just be going for another Skiz onto the Men Arms. I could pull the Occultus twice. Uh, you know what? I'm still gonna pull the Occultus because it's a little bit worse than... Uh, they, they can go Demon Spawn now, but I still feel like this artillery is a bit more threatening. Even if they go Demon Spawn to my chest, that is going to disrupt me. But I'd still rather go ahead and do this. What I'm probably going to do after they go for the pull is first go Fast String Vapors, and then I'm going to move to position 2. But no, they're actually going to do that first. Interesting. Well, uh, they do get one dodge, which I'm very, very happy about. If they want to do that first, I might just go ahead and drop um, maybe a Fast String Vapors first. Yeah, let's give ourselves some dodge. Let's drop the fast string vapors first. I don't really mind getting the gesture pulled right now. I don't think it's the end of the world. I can just move forward with the flash front and I'll just act the next round. Uh, fast string vapors here is going to absolutely demolish my opponent's team. Very glad I have the material passes today. I want to keep the antiquarian alive for as long as possible. I mean, that's just, that's it for every match. With the finisher, you really need to keep her alive. But yeah, now they're going to go for the demon's pull. Since I do get to go first next round, also, I'm in position one. I'm going to go for the finale. Uh, now I could move to position 1, or I could move to position 2. Which one do I want to do? I'm rhyming. I think moving to position 1 might generally be fine here. Yeah, it should be okay, but I might want to move to position 2. Let's move to position 2 just to make sure we get that finale off on the Occultist. Uh, this way there won't be any, any funny shenanigans going on, and that Occultist will go down for sure. So... Yeah, after this happens, I want to do as much damage to that, uh, to that occultist as possible, so I feel like uh, an expose here by me might be my best move, but uh, punish might also be very good here. Which one do I want to do is the question. I'm going to go for the punish first. Let's go ahead and drop a punish on here with U7. That's not too bad, but it's not enough for us to drop the finale. We have 9 to 16. Could do it, but I'm not gonna do it just yet. We definitely want to drop Finale as soon as possible. I could also drop it on the Flash one, but I have a Flash one to have the match, so it's not it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna drop a Punish on there. I could go for the Finale already, but if I miss it, it's gonna be really rough for me. If I miss it, it is gonna be really rough, but I also don't want to get hit by a Demon's Pool. So, what is the Shepherd Dog gonna do? I'm just gonna drop a Fast String Papers here. Let's, let's play it a little bit safe. We do 3 damage now, we definitely have enough to Finale. And after this, it's definitely going to be finale. I'm not going to wait around for dropping it on the flash or anything of the likes. Just get rid of this occultist. They don't have redeem here, and then they'll be down a character, and I can sort of just demolish these two characters with my DOT pressure. 
they might be very tanky against damage teams, but they're not that tanky against uh, DOD teams and the likes. If they don't go for a self heal, no, they do go for a self heal. Okay, that's seven. That's perfectly okay for me. What I could do here is, since I go first, I could generally just expose, and it might do enough damage. At the same time, it might not, so I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and finale, even though it's going to make me take a little bit more stress. We drop the finale now, and then we just go go ahead with puncture and just start focusing down these guys. Or do we really want to puncture, is the question. I might actually just go expose, and that will save my antiquarian from getting hit by Rain of Sorrows. That's going to be very, very good for me, if something of the likes does happen. Uh, because if she isn't getting hit by Rain of Sorrows, she's... He's gonna survive for a bit longer, my opponent has to keep dropping command buffs, or, you know, they, they'll just miss my characters. So, I could... Um, yeah, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop an exposure on the Vendor Arms, make him take a little bit more crits too. I can definitely come in clutch, not for the stress, but just for the for the DOT. Yeah, the DOT could be very, very handy. I think there's just gonna be another command buff. You know, if you wanna hit my, my shield breaker, you just have to drop another one. You might be going bolster, but I wouldn't. But no, they're gonna go bellow, probably just to get the affliction on there. It does make sense, but I personally would have dropped the command buff there. I think it's just overall a better play to make sure you can hit my characters. But then again, they can drop a bellow and then a command. I wonder what they're gonna do here. Well, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the immediate Rain of Sorrows. And that is a double crit. Nice! Two bleeds, two blights. Now that backline is definitely dying. And things are very, very dire for my opponent here. Because once that backline dies, which they will, once they do die, I'll still have a shield breaker and a flash to deal with just their flash ones. And then I will most definitely have the advantage here. So the Antiquarian might not actually be the win condition today. I'm just going to keep her alive so I can take the kills on that backline. But after after that backline dies, she won't really be necessary to finish off this match. But no, they do, they do go for the Hunter. They hit my Shield Breaker. They do. Lucky. Quite lucky, if you ask me. Well, you're dead. Sorry, uh, little Chester, but you're most definitely dead. <laughs> you, did, you did your worth, though. I think. I think you did its worth. And let's go ahead and maybe... I could drop another Expose here. It's a bit weird, but... Um, let's drop another Expose. I should be alive still, so let's do that. And we'll see what we want to do next. I might be going for a Take Cover here as well, so I'm not worried. I'll, I'll go ahead and drop the Serpent Stone once I really need to drop it. That's really the one thing I don't want to have happen. It's just I put 25% on the Shield Breaker. That would be absolutely disastrous. We do not want that to happen. So with that Reign of Sorrows, the Jester's dead, so bye-bye. And now we have to do something with the Antiquarian. Well, we do get to go first. So what I could do here is I could just drop a Festering Vapors and then drop the Day Cover. I feel like that makes sense here. Or I could drop Festering Vapors and protect me, but then Hound's Harry could be a kill. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. And that's a very nice crit. Very high crit chance on there. Oh no, did I not apply the second debuff? I failed it! I failed a 90% debuff chance. How unbelievable. Can you imagine failing a 90% debuff chance, but still getting the crit, so it's actually almost perfectly okay. And here comes the bellows. I don't have virtue chance on antiquarian, sadly, but it shouldn't matter all that much. Well, now it is time. It is time to go take cover. Uh, it is still not great because, you know, Reign of Sorrows can hit, Hounds Harry can hit, but it's only 5% death blow chances, so I'm really hoping that doesn't uh, that doesn't happen to us. So the Houndmaster has to go for self heal now. The Men at Arms doesn't, so they'll probably pick the Men at Arms first. But if they do that, I'll just go ahead and move forward, maybe even with a Serpent Sway here. Yeah, I might even move forward with a Serpent Sway, depending on, on what happens. They hit me again with the Bellow. Jesus, you have 90 accuracy there. No, I mean, you have 100 accuracy and you're hitting all those 50-50s. Oh, no, that's bad. Oh, that is really bad that you were masochistic. And she goes irrational. That is absolutely horrible. I could not have gotten worse, worse afflictions than that. Yeah, that is atrocious that that's what happened. Okay. This is going to make things a hell of a lot closer, let me tell you that much. How much damage is Puncture? 3 to 5? I'm gonna go for it, I do 4. Eh, not bad. Not bad whatsoever. 35 dodge now, unbelievable. They're not even dropping command buffs and they're hoping to hit my characters, yeah. Like, not even keeping one command buff up, not very 
well played for my opponent if you ask me, but you know, they're, they're going for it. So here comes the Reign of Sorrow, Stealth Hit, I don't have any, any dodge whatsoever. So that is one Death Door check, but uh, now I'm gonna go for the Punish here, 25. I do want to keep my, my Antiquarian alive, at least to go for that one Festering Vapors. Right now they can go for self heal, or they can go for Hound's If they go for Hound's and they get the Death Blow, I'm gonna be very angry, because I have 80% Death Blow resistance, please don't get it. Ah, such is the way of the Butcher's Circus, please don't get it, Clueless. Oh, god damn it. Alright. Alright, calm down, ship. calm down, everything's fine. Everything's fine, we still got this in the bag. And okay, that's a very nice punish there. I cannot believe they got the 20% death blow there as well. This would have just been an antiquarian double death blow with the festering vapors, and you know, then it's a 2v1 and it's GG. But no, that's not gonna happen, because now the doggy might be going for self-heals or the likes, I'm not entirely sure. I definitely want to drop a serpent sway. Thankfully, masochistic doesn't prevent me from doing that. And I do get to go first. So I could just be going for a puncture here. Please do enough damage. It's not enough damage. Well, he is dropping down to zero from DOT though, so I have that at the very least. Are they dropping Reclaim? They're thinking about it. Uh, I would. I would drop Reclaim here. Yeah, I would drop Reclaim. No, they're gonna go for the 65% punish. Nah, they're gonna go for their claim. Okay. Well, they're gonna keep the Houndmaster alive for a bit then, uh, doing that. What I could do is I could drop an Adder's Kiss and then die, so that's definitely an idea. <laughs> or I could uh, could go for a punish and then die, so that's definitely another idea. Which one do I want to do? I might just click and sway. I might generally just click and sway here. Yeah, let's click, Masochistic Taunt, and let's go ahead and drop a Serpent Sway, give ourselves our dodge back. And hopefully things will be okay for us. My opponent doesn't have any shred of accuracy on their side of the team. So I really wish I hadn't gone masochistic. I would have very decent amounts of dodge on the shield rigor, but you know, I'm still at 50. Could still could still work out for me here. And the fire drone goes low on HP. Does he want to drop a a heal uh, with the exsanguinate, I wonder? He's probably gonna go for a punish on my flash, force me to drop a heal. That would make sense. Hmm. I do have exsanguinate, so my head chances are decent, even against that Hound Master. And they go for a punish indeed, so I am I am dropping here. Okay. I do get to go first, so I could risk it for the biscuit, but do I want to risk it for the biscuit is the question. Well, probably not. Uh okay. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. I still have Bell of Divas on me, that's so annoying. I'm gonna drop a routine before I can't. Okay. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna What am I gonna do? I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna risk the 20%. I feel like I have to, because I really want to drop the redeem next round. So I'm gonna do this. The doggy is gonna be permanently at this store now, as long as I, you know, get that 95 blade. And they might go for the hounds area, but it's very unlikely that they get it. it. They might even do zero damage here, or they might miss. You know, that there's a, that's a possibility as well. That's most definitely a possibility. So now we're gonna click. We're gonna go for the redeem. Okay, this time it works. And good, good, good. The Shieldbreaker's fine, the Flange one's fine, and we have some Death Blows coming into this Hound Monster. Why are matches with the Winter Blitz DOT always this close? Like, unbelievable. Just something happens, and then the match always goes down to the final 2v2 or 1v1, or 1v2 or whatever. It's always freaking clutch. It's insane. We're gonna go for the Hound Sammy here. I'm definitely gonna drop an Adder's Cast, even though I could get an Affliction. Uh, and now I can't anymore because they got a crit. But, uh, yeah. I Okay, that's good. Uh, I'm just gonna drop the other skis here. Even though the hit chance is less, I gotta get that DOT in there. Please get the AT. Okay, good. Uh, now with that DOT, he might still... No, he's actually gonna be fine. Oh, god damn, Flash. Why do you gotta be so broken? Why have you gotta be so broken? Here comes Exsanguinate. Yeah, that hurts. That does hurt. That hurts quite a bit. Hmm. Okay, how do you wanna, how do you wanna answer this? Uh, might be an expose, just to drop him down to 0 HP. Nice. Nice. Let's do, let's do an expose here. Okay, that's an affliction, that's good. Means our exsanguinate is probably gonna be a kill here. Please get, please don't get a dodge affliction. 
Okay, irrational. That's very good. That's uh, that's exactly what I wanted on their side. Because now they have less dodge. Now I exsanguinate is very likely to hit. I do have to exsanguinate here. And okay, that's actually very good that they're gonna bleed there on the flash drop. Means he's gonna be dropping to zero faster. And I am gonna get afflicted here. I feel. No, not yet. Not yet. Even dropping to Death Star, I won't get afflicted. Nice. That's very good for me. And I'm definitely gonna go for a Death Look here. With the Exsanguinate, I don't get it, sadly. I do not get it. Means he's gonna stay alive for a bit, but hopefully I get it with the Shield Breaker. Really, really hopefully. Because he's staying alive for quite a bit. We definitely don't want that. So they have to hit my Flash Ult again. And they are gonna hit the flash one, they're just focusing him down here. I still have a lot of heals, I still have one redeem, one exsanguinate, two exsanguinates. I'm probably gonna drop the, the redeem next. And I'm gonna go rapturous. Wow, who could have guessed that? Who could have seen that coming? Okay, Shieldbreaker, don't let me down. I need this to be a death blow. Do I wanna expose or puncture? Uh, there's really no reason not to expose here. And eyes, that's good. Okay, now it's a 2v1 and I think my opponent has lost already. How many exsanguinates have they got left? They got two exsanguinates left. Ah, oh, that's still quite a bit. That's still quite a bit. Like, two crit punishes and my shieldbreaker dies, let's be honest. Okay, there's a punish, but not on the shieldbreaker. I feel like that's a mistake. They could have gone for the shieldbreaker there. She would have, uh, she would have had a really rough time here. Let's see, what do I want to do? Uh, they're going to be in a really rough place, actually. I can just drop a redeem here. Yeah, I'll just drop a redeem, then I still have two exsanguinates. Like, sure, I might be dropping, but if they do not go for the exsanguinate now, my puncture or my expose will probably do enough damage to bring them down to zero. So they have to make a they have to make a call here. They are going to go punish. Interesting. They go punish. Did they get the bleed? It's 95. Yeah, they do get it, of course. They're not Shepherd Doggy. And let's go for the Expose. 4 to 8. Okay, this time I do enough damage. That's like the first time today that I genuinely do enough damage with an ability. And I could be dropping Punishes here, or I could drop an Exsanguinate. Oh, please, Flagell, don't goof yourself at Death Star. That would be... That would be uh, horrendous. Do I want to drop a Punisher on Exsanguinate? I feel like Exsanguinate just to stay alive. Yeah, start reducing that, uh, that, that death door resistance. Look at that, minus 150 healing skills. Down to minus 100, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, what's your Exsanguinate hit chance on me? Not very good, I hope. I have 35 dodge here. I still have Serpent Sway, by the way, so I can drop that whenever, whenever I need to. And here goes the Exsanguinate. 24 heal. They're still taking a lot of bleed on there, but it's not enough. It's not enough at the moment. Now this is definitely a Serpent Sway turn. And let's drop it. And after this, it's probably going to be yet another Exsanguinate from the Flagellant. And it's going to be my final one, but that's okay, because they're also dropping, so they have to drop their final one. Okay, I, I was going to say that's just a bit of stress, but no, it's not a bit of stress. She's dying soon to that stress. Oh, nice crit, good job. And now they're dropping as well, that's very good. And that bleed is going to stay there for a bit, so even after they drop the Exsanguinate, they will not heal for enough. So that's very, very good for me. I've already gotten one Death Star check on them, so that's helpful as well. Yeah, the thing is, one crit punish on my Shieldbreaker, like one crit punish, one punish, and she dies anyway. So it's not very good for me at all. Situation isn't isn't great, because she's taking way too much stress. Hmm. I am taking enough bleed here, just barely, but it is enough. Interesting, they go for the Exsanguinate there, they want to hit. That's the reason my hit chance on the, on the other character probably wasn't too good. And let's see, do I want to add a skiss? They have no more heals anymore, so I really have no reason to add a skiss. I could just drop an expose here. Yeah, let's drop an expose instead. Maybe get some crits. Crits are stress heals, so that would be that would be good for me. And I don't think other skiss could have gotten a crit for like, I don't know, 15. Definitely couldn't. Not a death star and, and masochistic. And 35 crit chance, I like it, but no crits. No crits for your Shepherd Doggy. But look at this, I have a Plagelant with one more Death Star resistance than you. And I have a Shieldbreaker which is still alive with two Serpent Sways, so I should win this, right? <laughs> I should win this. Oh, are they gonna... Oh, they're, they were thinking about going for the Shieldbreaker. <laughs> ah, God damn it. okay. Oh, boy. Okay. No, don't do that! Oh my god. 25. Oh, okay, that's that's the win. Alright, GG's. GG's to my opponent, and that is 1-1 one, one for the Winter Glistia T team. Oh my god. That was exciting. That was too exciting, if you ask me. I'm gonna take a little break and let's go for match number 3.
Alright, and here we go for match number three, this time against Remy Gay. So, <laughs> Remy is gay, I guess. <laughs> That's a funny name. And they have a stress team with a generalist crusader, I see. No sacred blades, so there's gonna be no virtue shenanigans going on there. But it is a strength team. Technically, with the rock, paper, scissors, I should win this match every single time, but you know, every single time is a bit. Uh, is uh, is a bit optimistic to, to say the very least. It's wishful thinking. So here comes command buff. They are gonna go aggressive. They are gonna go very very aggressive here. They have a lot of DOT though. Uh, yeah, they have a very fast strength team. Let's be honest. I'm still gonna drop um, a battle out because I do need that accuracy every single time. If you don't get that accuracy, you're just gonna miss your exsanguinates. And if you miss your exsanguinates, you're losing the match. So that's not very good whatsoever. So we don't want that to happen. So, just drop the battle ballot, don't think twice about it, and you won't have uh, any funny shenanigans happen in your match. Well, you will, but not uh, funny accuracy shenanigans happen in your match. Unless it's like 93% hit chances and you miss those, but you know, what can you do about that? So what I am gonna do here is probably get um, exposed on the Crusader. The reason I'm going for the Crusader is, with that extra crit received chance, it's not going to matter because I'm not going to go punish on him. I'm going to go Reign of Sorrows and just demolish that, but I am going to go Festering Vapors, and if I get a crit on the Crusader, that's 10 DOT you're tanking to this Materia Pestis. So you can see here that in terms of trinkets, like, I definitely have an advantage. They have Rotting Trophy, which is decent, but it's not a great trinket. I feel like Materia Pestis is just overall step up, because doing extra stress on the Antiquarian, sure. Extra buy chance, it's a bit more, so sure as well, but yeah. Uh, the, the big problem here is that I just do way more DOT than you do with this uh, with this Festering Vapors, and there we go, that's a crit, and look at how much DOT it is. Two points for five rounds, it's amazing, it really is. They go for a stun and they fail it because they have a Generalist Crusader, so either you're going for Zells or you're going for stuns. I feel like if you want to go for stuns, at least let it be on the enemy Crusader, like when he has to heal, or at least let it be on the Jester when, you know, Finale is very, very powerful. So I feel like uh, just going for a stun here on the on the flatulent, you know, it's technically a good play because Ring of Sorrows is going to absolutely destroy you, but at the same time, the stun chance is just a 65, so you might have been better off using your command buff to just drop a Zealous here, put my chest with like 10 HP, also hurt my flatulent a little bit, maybe stress him out a touch as well. I feel like Zealous Accusation or even Bark of Light would have been better here. But Shep, you have a DOT team, why would Bark of Light be helpful? Well, with Bellow debuffs and with Bark of Light, it means that after my anti current is afflicted, it's quite likely that she does zero damage with the Festering Vapors. So that's something that you should always be on the lookout for. Now, I have a bit of a decision here to make. I kind of don't want to use Take Cover, but at the same time, I kind of have to because Reign of Sorrows Expose is way better than, you know, moving forward and puncture. Yeah, let's just let's just go take cover here. I I'm okay with this. She can just stay alive, stay still, just chill for like the first four rounds, and then and then we're gonna destroy everything with our very good death blow chances here with the finisher. It's always the same idea with this team. You just need to know it to, when to play it well because there's a lot of things that you need to practice, like a lot of matchups. This team is, is not very obvious when you're actually playing it. And that is good for you because that means you can improve playing it. So that's very, very good. So here comes Rain of Sorrow. Still no crits, even with our very, very nice crit chance. I will say, I've been getting very lucky with the bleeds today. We're not getting Curse of the Spiked Vat, even though we could fail bleed here, fail the bleed here. We're not failing them. I could have also failed both the blights, believe it or not, with this cross hammock. I actually haven't gone over the trinkets because I just imagined you know what the trinkets are like already. Dear Anon, but since you don't, I have crushed Hemlock on the Jester and on the Flatulent because with the Harvest and the Dirk Snap and the Pondish Rain of Sorrows, you can make very good use of that Hemlock. Chillbaker, of course, is always going to have double dodge, and uh, the Antiquarian is going to have Rotary Passes for those uh, very good Blights, and also going to have Finisher for the for getting the kill. She's our Finisher character. We can get a Finale on the Antiquarian now. Uh, the question is, do I want to? The answer is, yes, we do want to. But Shep, why? Why do you waste a finale this early? Well, with no Antiquarian, there's no finisher character. With no finisher character, it's quite unlikely that they kill my characters, because I'm not stressed out at all yet. And if I'm not stressed out at all, they have to go for death blows with like 20% hit uh, death blow chances, 30% death blow chances. 
and unless you're talking about the previous two matches, that should probably not happen here. Did the Mike Flagellant really die to both Death Blows today? He did, didn't he? Both first Death Store checks he died. Yeah, that extra 5% Death Blows resistance really not paying off. I, I guess. Really, really not paying off. So here it is definitely, most definitely a puncture turn, because you just uh, put that occult in position one, and this is kind of the problem of playing Occultist and Plague Doctor, it's because Shieldbreaker exists. Also the problem of using guard characters, it's because Shieldbreaker exists. She just goes for the puncture and your characters are like, Oh no, my entire game strategy is gone, there's nothing I can do about this. If I move back, I just get punctured again. Shieldbreaker is so much fun. She's not an amazing character, but she's such an annoying one that she completely makes up for not being amazing. Okay, I'm gonna go rational here. That's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop an Adder's Kiss on the Crusader. Like, there's really no reason not to. Oh, the crit chance. That's so good. That exposed Diva Flaccid for so long. He ate so many crits because of that. I mean, I feel like he only ate two crits because of it. But those two crits were massive because now he's dropping down to zero HP for sure. If you get a crit with the with Adder's Kiss, it's the only. It's actually the only ability apart from Caltrips. That makes your, your bleed or blight duration be uh, more than an extra one round. It's actually an extra two rounds. So instead of getting five blight for five rounds, you get five blight for seven, which is 35 damage, not counting, you know, the damage from the Adder's Kiss. It's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. So for here, I want to keep my Antiquary in action before I go for, you know, for going for death flow, but I don't imagine my opponent not going for a heal. So I don't feel like I have to do that, so instead I'm just going to drop a Fenster in Papers and blight all of them down. Because, you know, oh, keep your finish of character action, keep your finish of character action. Well, yes, but if they're going to heal anyway, it doesn't really matter, because if I go for my Flagellant action first, I just have to drop a heal a little bit too early, and if I go for a Punish, you know, they're still going to go for a self-heal. And after they do that, I would not get a death blow this round, because uh, the gesture is dazed. The dazes suck, but such is the way of the Butcher's Circus. I could go aggressive here, but that's a terrible play. So instead of doing that, I could be very greedy and die to an early death blow, which is also a terrible play. Or I could just go ahead and drop a Redeem here to make sure that the um, Shieldbreaker doesn't drop to 0hp and just keep my Exangonites for later. I could have gone for pressure by just going for an Exangonite there on the Crusader, but I honestly feel like I don't have to. You're dropping down to 0 and I just go for the Mana Arms instead. Yeah, that's perfectly okay. So one good thing about Dirk Snap and Crushed Hammock is that even though they might have a lot of protection, I might have a lot of build, even though some might be at this store, afflicted, all the bad stuff, it's still gonna apply that little bit of blight, and that's four damage that you wouldn't get otherwise. I dealt like three damage with that Dirk Snap, right? In in fact, I actually dealt like uh, actually dealt like seven, which is more than double. It's kind of like the Caltrips thing, where you go for a stun, you do six damage, but in reality you do eight. Or if you if or if they have a lot of prot, you do three damage, but in reality you do five, and that's very very good. That those are high value trinkets and abilities. So here I'm just gonna go ahead and drop a expose on this crusader because there's really nothing much better for me to do. I don't want to puncture anyone at the moment. I don't need to do damage to the occultist. So I'm just gonna drop an expose. Maybe roll for crits. Maybe get an affliction on the crusader. That could be helpful as well. And yeah, just take it from there. So now we have two dazes, so we definitely can't use our finisher character action, which sucks, but that is the way of the Butcher Circus. Hopefully I get a crit on here, some nice blights on the on the Manor Arms as well, start bringing him down to zero. And then with my Flagellant being alive, it's going to be very difficult for my opponent to win this. Do they have retribution on that Manor Arms? I think they do. Well, you're dead. So, sorry Chester, but you're gone this, this match as well. They do have Retribution, so even if, wow, even if they uh, have the Men Arms as the last character standing against the Flagellant, they can still win because of that Retribution. But uh, even then, like, the, that the Cult is NCO HP, he might keep going for self heals, but I have enough DOT to make sure that he just keeps on dying over and over and over again. And he's going to be afflicted soon. The Crusader is probably going to die soon. I'm pretty sure the Shieldbreaker can take him on. And that is an absolutely unnecessary weakening curse. I do not know why he went for that. That's a very weird play. He was dead to the horror. He was absolutely dead to the horror. You did not need to do that. But I guess that just means your cult is going to go down kind of early here. And no extra strength on my opponent's characters, but it is okay. That corpse is going to go away soon, and then the Crusader is going to follow shortly after. And then the Mended Arms most definitely can't win, so let's just skip on to the end of the match. Alright, and that is gonna be it for this match, so let's skip on to the next one.
All right, and here we go for match number four, right? Yes, it is match number four. And we're playing against the Super Kismu. So this is a darkest opponent that we also haven't played against. And they have what appears to be a stress team with triple repast. Is it? I mean, the Abomination isn't really in a position to repast, but uh, interesting stuff they have going on here. Well, you know, we've started off um, with this. We started off with the Battle Belt. We're going to keep starting off with the Battle Belt because we need that accuracy. There's dodge possibilities here on my opponent's side with the bolster and all that, all that nasty stuff. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. So now my flagellant is probably going to get slammed to the back, which isn't too great, but, you know, such is the way of the Butcher's Circus. And it's with a crit as well. Nice. But I'm just going to go ahead and drop... Do I want an Adder's Kiss or do I want an Puncture? That is the question here. Uh, I don't feel like I need to Puncture. I feel like Adder's Kiss is overall better. Adder's Kiss, the man at arms here, make sure that he starts taking down to zero. So that's overall going to be very good for me. Let's keep in mind that once this occultist dies, my opponent will have absolutely zero healing. So that is most definitely my intention here, make my opponent have zero healing. You're going to go for the immediate fullest advance before the Vendetta, so interesting, but uh, yep. And now the Mastering Vapors is kind of a weird play because it will hit into the repost. And it could crit, it could most definitely crit. At the same time, what's the chance that actually it's right? It's not too good, do I want to go for it? Uh, I kind of do. Oh, I kind of do. I kind of don't. But I kind of do. You only live once. Let's go for it. Oh, damn it. Crit 20. Of course. Oh, I hate this game so much. I mean, I should have seen it coming, right? Yeah, I probably should have. Oh, damn. Crit 20 is from the high man. Not even a confirmed hit chance. Very far from it, actually. Yeah, very far from a confirmed hit chance. But, you know, just crit 20, because why not? And I missed the... I missed the... Wait, I missed the occultus as well. That's unbelievable. Well, I can drop an early redeem already, or I could just move forward here. I don't want to move forward to position 2 or to position 1. Uh, that is the question. Um, I'm going to move to position 1 here, because if they want to, if they really want to disrupt my, my jester, they can still go ahead and drop the... and just uh, drop a slime on him, so that wouldn't be too good. And they're just gonna do that. Okay, I see. I see how it is. Well, in that case, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop a take cover. I'm perfectly fine with this. Are they gonna go for another slam? Are you the kind of player to go slam twice? Are you the kind of player to go slam twice instead of just detransforming and stunning? I feel like it's better for them to detransform stun uh, than to go for a slam twice, but I wonder what they're gonna do. Well, they're gonna go for the vendetta now. Please miss. Okay, that's not a miss. That is most definitely not a miss. And now, Harvest isn't really a possibility because, you know, reasons. What I could do here is I could just drop a Puncture, and I will. I will just go ahead and drop a Puncture. Not that this occultist, we do have to take him out, so let's go ahead and do that. The repulse are very annoying. Let me, let me be completely clear here. The repulse are being very annoying. They're not letting me do the plays I want to do. And they are definitely messing with my team composition. Yeah, most definitely. And arms is taking a lot of DOT, but it's not enough to drop him to zero. And it is going to be the transform stomp on who? I wonder. Uh, none of them are confirmed hit. Fair. Just go for the 70, sure thing. And now I have a few options. Option number one, just pass. Just pass, bro. And let's see what we want to do after that. I don't imagine... They'll move back twice here, because that's a Reign of Sorrows. So I really don't imagine them doing that. What they could do is move back if is move forward with the men in arms. They might do that. They might move forward twice. I, I could do that. I don't know. I don't really play their team. The very weird looking team. I wouldn't play something like that. What do they want to do? Is the question. Are they gonna move forward? No, they're gonna bellow. No? No, no, they are gonna move forward. Interesting. Well, now I have a bit of a decision to make, and I am going to make it. I'm going to go rid of stars here and not get created for enough. Nice. Okay, that's good. That's good. I was kind of uh, sad that could have happened, but, you know, I failed both the bleed and the blight on the Harman, by the way. I failed both of them, well, the one and the two. Very annoying. And they go for the best artillery. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Things are not looking amazing. No, they are not. Well, one thing I can do here that's going to be very difficult for my opponent to stop. It's not very difficult, but it is It is still kind of annoying. I can go puncture here. I have to go puncture. It's not amazing, but I have to go puncture just to 
uh, just a bit better cultist in position one, so you can't go demons pull. Demons pull here is just devastating. So let's do this, and they're gonna drop the retribution now, right? Just prevent harvest. Yeah, they're gonna drop retribution, and okay, that's a mess. That's actually pretty good that it is a mess. Now I have a few decisions to make. Which decisions is the shepherd doggy going to make here is the question. Hmm. Let's be smart about this. Let's also be very smart about this. There's a move back into finale. That's that's an idea. Uh, though I might die by doing it. Yeah, I might I might die doing it. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the regen. It's not a, not amazing by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, because I'm at uh, I'm at this store here, but I'm gonna do it regardless because I want that regen. They might go for the five percent, but you know it's a five percent. Are they gonna go for it? No way they go for it. There's absolutely no way they do it. They're not that crazy. They did get crit last round, so they have plus healing skills. That's not very good for me, but they're gonna go ahead and drop a duelist advance. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Well, that puts me at this store here. That's a death store that I that I care about quite a bit as well. And of course, with the crit, they make me go hopeless. So now that uh, weakening curse is actually just gonna. I mean, that vulnerability hex is probably gonna stress me out like crazy. So that's not too good, but. Yeah, such is the way with the Butcher's Circus, I suppose. Well... This is a rough spot we're in. That's definitely a rough spot we're in. I doubt they'll go for the Weakening Curse. I very much doubt it. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop a... Just drop a Punish here on the Abomination. Let's just do that. Bleed him out, Blight him out, and then they're, they're gonna drop a self heal, and then I'll go ahead and Dirk Stamp, and they'll slam me. But after they slam, I'll still have regen, everything's gonna be fine, everything's gonna be okay, and they're just gonna take it from there, please. Okay, that's fine. That's fine, that's not too bad. But uh, let's just go ahead and drop a, a Dirk Stamp here. No, it's not enough! Oh, I just had to do. I just had to do 8 damage, and it's, yeah, it's not enough. Oh no, it is enough! Oh, just barely enough, actually. He's still dropping. Okay, good. That's very good that he's still dropping. Yeah, here comes the slam, and I am gonna drop, but that's fine, because I can just click and just drop a dark snap after it. Oh, they have Demon's Pull now. They do have the Demon's Pull now, but if they do it, they're kind of crazy. So let's just go ahead and click here. Oh, it is enough stress. Go abusive, abusive, give me abusive. Oh, paranoid, the worst. Okay, that is dodge. That is dodge. Ah, <sighs> stress though. Stress hurts. 5 to 9, get the blight, get the blight. Nah. Unlucky. I failed two blights on this abomination. That's very sad. That is definitely on the sad side of, uh, of things. And you're gonna go ahead and go for the duelist advance, actually. Oh no. Oh, that's scary. That is scary. Yeah, I definitely have to pull here. There's no world where we don't. Come on, stop doing stress. Let's Let's go for a pull here. Yeah, there's absolutely no world, no world where you don't go for for the pull here on the occultist. It's a bit slow until you just two kills, right? You you don't want that to happen. <laughs> you definitely don't. You're gonna go for the self heal now, or are they not? Oh, they're not. They're not going for it. Are they not gonna go for it? That's insane. If they don't go for it, I'm just gonna go fast ring. Boom, bang, 50-50. If if I take it, GG. If I don't take it, I die. So no, they're gonna go for the heal. Oh, they're not. Are they gonna go for the five percent? Wow, that's crazy. Okay, they do not get the 5%, thankfully. There's a bit of... Is it enough? Okay, Shep, math. Math, okay. Plus 33%. They have to do 38 stress. Nah, there's no way. Oh, yeah, I do regen as well. I do regen. No! Oh, Antiquarian. Oh, Antiquarian. You moron. Hopeless pass. In the most important moment of the match. Hopeless pass. Okay. Okay. If you stun my flash ones, No, they don't. They go for it. Uh, this is a turn for 25, right? Or is it a turn for redeem? Think, Shepard. Think. I still have Festering by the start of next round. They're not going to lose their past. I'm gonna go for the 25. Okay, it's not a, not a kill. Hmm. 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 Decisions. Yeah, I can drop a redeem here, but do I really want to? Is the question. Okay, they go command. I'm gonna go for the pastry now. It's a 65. I mean, I'm probably gonna die after it. Let's be honest. But um, yeah, because there's gonna be two death sword checks. Will I have the death resistance? No, it's gonna go away as well. That's insane. 
that I'm still gonna go for it. It's a 65, I got him. Yeah, I'm dead. It's fine. That's one character gone, and it's very, very good for me. They can go for the Death Claw now, but they don't have any good ability to go for it. If they could do this advance here, they're kind of missing out a bit. Uh, please don't get the Death Blow. Damn. That is annoying. God damn, that is very annoying. Okay. It's not the end of the world, though. It is not the end of the world. I think this is a Serpent Soy turn, believe it or not. Serpent Soy, so I can add this case twice, or something of the likes. Uh, I feel like this is a Serpent Soy turn. But they have to go for the Men Arms action, which they kinda don't. So let's go ahead and just sway here. This is one of the very rare situations where I'm swaying prematurely. Yeah, because there's really nothing too much better for me to do. Let's keep in mind that through a pass doesn't might crit for 20, but against the Aegis block doesn't do anything. And they're gonna go for the Defender. Interesting. Well, do I wanna punish here? No, not really. Do I want a Reign of Sorrows? Yes, I do. I do want a Reign of Sorrows, because that's both characters dropping to zero. Nice. I failed both the Bleed and the Bite, but that's very likely. Now the Abomination drops to zero. He does have self heals, but he's already used both his transformations, which is very good for me. I'm still not stressed out too much. I wonder why that is. I wonder why I didn't take that much stress. Oh, he doesn't have Wretch's Cloak, that's why. Oh, he's gonna go for the Manacles here. Is he gonna get it? Oh, he doesn't. That's so clutch for me. That is so freaking clutch. Okay, I can go for the... Um, I can go for the plays, that's for sure. I can go for a lot of plays. But the Wicked Slice is gonna hurt, let's be honest here. The Wicked Slice is definitely gonna hurt. I have to kill this Abomination. Do I wanna kill him with a Puncture? Hmm... I might die after that, that's the problem. Do I wanna die? No. Don't. Uh, but I'm still gonna go for it. If he drops me to the storm with the stun, I will... Oh, okay, that failed. If he drops me to the storm with the stun, I will still have, um, I will have more stun resistance, so it's very unlikely that it works. Oh, they go absolution, interesting. In that case, I'm definitely gonna win of and this is a very good situation for me. Alright, nice. I appreciate it. Very much appreciate it. Still a lot of DOT coming onto this, uh, Abomination. He still has another of those absolutions, but... Uh, this is still overall very, very good for me. They can't hit me now with Retribution, so that's nice. And, uh, of course, the Hireman can try hitting my Shieldbreaker, but he's just gonna walk straight into the Aegis if he hits. And, yeah, he's definitely gonna hit. Look at the accuracy he's got. And the Fly Archmont, if he drops to Death Star, I'll just go for an Excite and it will be fine. But they move forward. Interesting. Moving forward at Death Star. I just gotta keep my characters alive. That's really all I've gotta do here. I feel like if you're them, you definitely go Duelist Advance here. Not, uh, not Wicked Slice. You definitely Duelist Advance here. You don't want me to drop Exagonate with Tempo on this Man at Arms. You definitely do not want that. Uh, he's at Death Star, but, um, okay, they do it. Yeah, they do do it. Hmm, I want to drop Reign of Sorrows here, but I obviously can't. I have to go for a heal, right? Yeah, I do have to go for a heal, because if I don't, I just die. Uh, what kind of heal do I want to do, is the question. Or do I really want to heal? Yeah, I do, I do, I do. I got a heal here. And I'm gonna... I mean, Redeem here isn't great, but I'm still gonna do it. I'm still gonna drop the Redeem. Hopefully crit heal. Nah, no crit heal, just 24. 24 is fine. It's still a very decent amount of healing. And after this, we're just uh, going to go ahead and drop an Expose or something of the likes. They are going to go for the Retribution first, so that does make sense. I feel like if I were them, I wouldn't have done that. I would have gone for the uh, for just Wicked Slice on the Flagellant and then take him out like that. But if they want to do that, I have a few choices here. I'm going to I'm gonna go for the Killing Blow. Yeah, it fails, but you know I've got to I got to go for it regardless. Twenty five after twenty five. How long is it going to be until I can get some, some death blows here? That is the question. When did this occultist die? When was the occultist kill? I can't remember. Was it round 5? Probably round 5. Or was it round 4? I don't know. Regardless, the problem, of course, it's probably going to be gone anyway. And that's 18. That definitely hurts, but it's not a crit, so I, I stay alive. Even if for, for a fleeting moment. And I'm going to go ahead and drop a puncture here. Oh, wow, that's good. Okay, not getting the pull isn't very good, but still, that's quite good. Yeah, I kind of wish that the Abomination had dropped there. Uh, I dropped the position for there, that would have been very good for me. But if they go for Manacles now, if they do enough damage, they might uh, give me stun resistance. But yeah, uh, if, you do not, if you do drop the flash onto 0 HP with your stun, he will have an extra 20% stun resistance, so that's always good for him. Now the corpse is gone, come on, corpse go away. Yes, it is gonna go away, that means exsanguinate. Ah, <laughs> exsanguinate with tempo. And then I still have a shield with another serpent's way. 
So yeah, things are, are coming up Shepherd Doggy. That's your abomination gone. And this is honestly, like, they played this well. I feel like they played this as good as they could have. But their team just isn't built well. Their team just isn't great. It only had one dedicated healer. It doesn't, doesn't really have too much consistency. And that's kind of the problem with what they were doing here. I feel like it was sort of, sort of a lack of consistency. They might still win this if they're very lucky, let's be honest. But I don't feel like their team was that good, because it, it supposedly could have dealt very well with what I have here. It has tools for everything. It has Iron Man for the repost against my AoE characters. It had, had an occultist to disrupt. All my characters had a, an abomination to disrupt my flagellant. They technically had a very good matchup here, but it just didn't work out because their team just isn't very well built. Well, the first team that doesn't have flagellant, you call it not well built, Shep. I mean, there are teams without flagellant that are well built. It's just... Uh... <laughs> Just, uh, just not that one, I guess. Definitely good idea, but the characters don't work too well together, I feel. But yeah, let's go on for the next match. And would you look at that, 39 wins. No, it's not, that's a joke. Let's go on for the final match, and it's gonna be against Super Kismu, so... They're gonna go ahead and play with probably what is their main team, which is uh, much better looking than the previous one they had. They're gonna miss the early Duelist Advance, but it's not the end of the world. They have Reclaim here on the flagellant. Oh no, Gauntlet Web Solution is in the wrong spot. How could you do this? Oh no, Monkey Spawn is also in the wrong spot. I hate this so much. Why must you do this? I'm definitely gonna drop a battle out here before I can't. I could drop a puncture on that chest to prevent their battle ballot, but I'd rather drop a battle ballot myself. Just have a battle ballot game and then we'll and then we'll start playing the match as it should be. So now I have a few decisions to make. So the team they're playing here is kind of more it's more defensive than mine, but also more aggressive. So it's very interesting what they have here. Their finisher character is definitely the Jester, so if I take him out, I'm gonna be very happy. But I have a few choices to make. I could either kiss this Shieldbreaker. It's very unlikely to hit. That's kind of the problem. <laughs> I hit her. Nice. Yeah, I kind of want to hit her because that DOT is just gonna just gonna hinder her kind of like forever. And I, that's really why I went for the battle battle. She doesn't have good blight resistance. I usually like just dropping an Adder's Kiss on a character that really doesn't want to get hit with it. And that's uh, that's what I did here. I just went for the 67. Not what I usually go for. Not what you should go for. But it is what I did. And they're gonna Serpent Sway. Wow, premature Serpent Sway. Interesting. Very interesting stuff they have going on here. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and drop a Rain of Stars into the Repulse. Crit 13. I mean, uh, not crit, but hit for 13. That's fine. And just DOT this Jester down. This is gonna be a fight of the Jester. So whoever kills the Jester first is gonna win. They have Impale. That might actually be better for them in this matchup. Interesting. Interesting they have Impale, not other skills. Yeah, I will say. Definitely not Festering Vapors here, that's kind of uh, suicidal, and uh, because of the repulse, they're gonna drop Vendetta, and then it's definitely suicidal, but yeah, before that happens, we're just gonna go ahead and do, and just do Rejuvenating Vapors here, keep my characters kind of alive. Oh, they puncture, interesting. Very interesting that they actually puncture here. They're, I thought they would go in pale, but no, they go for the immediate puncture. Well, that puts me in a position to, <laughs> to finale, you know? <laughs> that does put me in a position to finale. Oh, let's drop another Rain of Sorrows, they hit me for 13, they don't have a finale on me. Oh crap, they might. They might have a finale on me if they go solo. Yeah, they go first next round, right? They they went first round one. Yeah, they did. They do have a finale on me. Or they might even just have a Wicked Slice into Dirk Snap. They don't do it, that's so weird. I feel like you had such a good kill opportunity here, because you have a team that has more direct damage than I have, and they could have taken massive advantage of it, but they didn't. That's so weird to me. That is definitely quite weird. Well, before they take advantage of it, um, I'm gonna go ahead and... Oh, what do I wanna do? How much damage are you taking? 12. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. 12, let's drop a puncture. Yeah, let's drop a puncture, let's prevent the solo, and uh, and prevent the Flagellant from doing the action he wants to do. Flagellant's probably gonna drop a reclaim here, just to keep the Jester alive, at least I feel like that's what they're gonna do. And yeah, they do drop a reclaim there, interesting. Well, how do I keep my characters alive here? Keep my characters alive, I have to finale him. Uh, how much damage is he taking? He's taking 12, healing 6, so he's taking 6 damage, that's 15. 15... I have to, I have to go aggressive here. There's no other way. There's no other way for me to win. No! No! Oh, that's bad. Oh, I only had to hit this Jester here. And by hitting the Jester, it would have dropped to like... 11 HP and then I'd have 9 to 16 on the finale. Oh, but they actually finale the Antiquarian, that's interesting. I wouldn't have done that. I personally would not have done that. I don't feel like that was their, uh, their best play here. I feel like that was a bit of a misplay by them. 
I feel like they could have kept the, the, the finale pressure there, because, nah, I wouldn't be able to finale them, I don't go first. Unless I went for like a 16 or a crit, I could have done that, but I'm not the kind of person to do that, I'm not J-Man. So yeah, I feel like they definitely should have kept the finale for the final one, but this might still be, uh, this might still be a very good situation for them, let's be honest here. Okay, what are they gonna do with this shield breaker? I still have the finale pressure, so I am gonna get my, my pressure back. And they're gonna go for the explosive. Of course, the is a very important character, so getting her out of the match is obviously great, but... You know, is it enough? Is everyone's question. Is it enough for my opponent here? Well, I do have a finale there on the flash one, so they're gonna have to go for some sort of heal. But, uh, I'm gonna... Oh, no, please hit. No! <laughs> oh, I really had to hit that one. That one really had to hit. Yeah, just to just have the finale pressure on the shield breaker and make my opponent scared. Yeah, that one really had to hit. Okay, it didn't. Do they do us advance here? Ah, oh, they do. Please don't come with a crit. Can I stop jinxing myself, please? Like, please, just for once, stop jinxing yourself, Shepherd Doggy. That would be lovely. Okay, that's a very good Reign of Sorrows hit, though. That means she's dropping, means that... Uh, Wow, it means that he's dropping as well. Oh my god, that's really good. And I have a finale here, so they have to go for a heal. Uh, yeah, they're gonna go for a redeem, but after they redeem, I just duck stab. Just duck stab, duck stab, duck stab. And bring this flange one closer down to, to zero. I still have two rounds of free chance, so that's very good for me. And oh, if I had gotten a crit there, this would have been so good. But yeah, no crit. 14 to 25 damage. It's actually 13 to 22 on this flange one. And they're gonna go for the duck stab, right? Oh, you, could you not do six? Nah, they don't. They do six. They do do six. <laughs> they do do six. <laughs> they do do. <laughs> they do do. Oh, why am I so silly sometimes? They do do. That's so funny. Oh, I'm gonna go for the dark snap here. 35. No, no takers. And uh, the gesture is gonna stay alive for for a while at least. I'm definitely gonna go rain of sorrows into you know whatever. So I'm, hopefully the chester will go down soon. They're gonna go puncture. Yeah, they do hit. Um, they they have a good kill shot on me. They have a decent. No, it's not good. It's decent. It's a 45 to kill. It's a 45 to kill. Could definitely fail for them. Hopefully it does. I'm just gonna go ahead drop the rainosaurus. Wow, still alive, chester. Okay. Well, he's gonna go afflicted now, so that helps. And then I'm gonna have to go puncture. That's very annoying that I have to go puncture. Well, they go masochistic here. Uh, that's good. That means they could oof themselves, even if I don't puncture. They're gonna go Wicked Slice, and yep, of course, they get to 45. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they get to 45, I wonder? Why wouldn't they? I'm gonna go for Puncture, that's your gesture gone as well, but, you know. They definitely have the advantage here, most definitely have the advantage. Yeah, this, this isn't good for me whatsoever. I needed to have my gesture alive here and just have the finale pressure on this Flash one. Flash one will have to go for Redeem here and then they would lose a lot of their healing turns, and I would just have a fun time. But instead, they get to drop a punish, and they have battle belt, so they do hit. They do hit all those uh, all those dirty punishes on me. Hmm. Mm hmm. Do I want to go Serpent Slayer? I might be going Serpent Slayer here. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and, and drop a sway, give ourselves a little bit of dodge, give ourselves that, uh, that Aegis. And maybe we can still win this. It's not too likely, but maybe we can still win. This is definitely not a surrender turn. Not yet, at the, at the very least. Not not yet. Having repulse here is definitely helpful for my opponent. Now, would this team hold up against the Mark teams? Maybe the Reclaim would be helpful, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It would, it would be rough for sure. So, they're gonna go for the Duelist Advance. They do hit. Comes with a crit as well, which gives them more accuracy. So, of course. But what I can do now is just... Uh, number of things, really. I'm just gonna drop this flash one down to zero. Let's just do it this way. Make it so he has to heal. If he doesn't heal, I could go for 20, and if I get to 20, I obviously win. If I don't get to 20, then, you know, he just stays alive through his greed and uh, all the nastiness. He's probably gonna drop an exsanguinate here, I believe. Uh, at least that's what I would do. I just drop an exsanguinate on the, on the confirmed hit chance, not on the shield breaker. You do not have a confirmed hit chance there, let me tell you that much. They're thinking about it, but no, they go for the flash one. Could they miss? Nah, they definitely can't. And, uh, yep, crit 30. Okay. This is looking more and more like a surrender turn. They're gonna go Serpent Sway now. If they don't, I go for the death one, they die. But yeah, they go Serpent Sway. They're not silly, Shepherd Doggy. They're not that silly. They have used two sways, though, so I could... I could just puncture here. I might still be able to take them out. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna puncture here. That's a crit as well, so that's helpful. And that shield breaker is actually closer to dying than it seems, because after another puncture, the next one could just be a death blow if I'm lucky. But I don't have to be lucky. That's that's a, that's the thing. So they drop an expose here. Am I at this store? Yep, I am. I am at this store with a crit too. But I do get a bit, a little bit of a heal going on here. Uh, do I want to risk it for the biscuit? How much do I want to risk it for the biscuit is the question. Well, I definitely have to risk it for the biscuit. I'm gonna go for a punish here. Do you want to go for a, for a wicked slice and they get another wicked slice death blow? I mean, sure, just GG. But if they don't get it, they're gonna lose their repulse, which is quite good for me. So they're gonna go for the wicked slice. They do not take it. Okay, there's a chance. Sometimes you have to take risks, you know. Sometimes you do have to take those risks. And after this, they're probably just gonna move forward here, I imagine. Yeah, just to move forward to position one, and they will still keep that repulse by doing it that way. But I'm just going to go ahead and click here and drop an exsanguinate, right? That would drop them down to zero after it. So is that what I'm going to go for, is the question. Could heal her, but doesn't really heal for too much. Could heal here. Would keep her alive for a little longer. That would keep me from having to use Serpent Sway. I could go aggressive. Aggressive means exsanguinate. Uh, let's drop her redeem. Let's drop her redeem. I think this is okay. Drop a redeem after this, we go for punctures on the shield breaker and, uh, and hopefully just try and win that way. That's gonna be my game plan here. That is the plan, that is the hope, that is the dream. If I get a 25 kill, this is gonna be really good. Yeah, but I, I just need to get a 25 kill and she's she's having a horrible time here. That's kind of the thing. Yeah, she's definitely having a tor hor horrible time. She's, she's in the grave. They're gonna go for the expose. Of course they get a crit on it. Why wouldn't they? That's, wow, that's a lot of crits received on me. That is a lot of crits received on me. Do I want to go for a Serpent Sweep or go for a Puncture? No. Puncture. And it fails. And I don't... <laughs> I don't get to move either. <laughs> okay. Okay, I did not get to move. Huh. That is that is not very good, I must say. That is definitely not very good. They might do enough damage with a Punish, but they don't see it. I feel like they could have dealt enough damage, but I do have Protection now, so that might actually save me here. Having this extra little touch of protection might actually be my saving grace. They're definitely... Wow. Okay, no, they do have Redeem up. Yeah, they do have that Redeem up. Grid heal number two, Electric Boogaloo. And now... Okay, Serpent Sway sure that's what I was gonna do. Grid heal number two, huh? Yeah. Wow. Okay, that hurts. That does hurt. Two crit heals coming from my opponent's side. Okay, yeah. Well, here comes the, um, the PBS. That's okay. And I just have to go ahead and... 50-50. Uh, yeah, it misses, of course. Crit heal! Now she doesn't drop to death's door after, after the bleeds. That's insane. That's actually insane that they get the luckiest that. That's unbelievable. Do you expose here? <sighs> Yes, Ancestor, they are exposed to a killing blow. And now here comes the puncture. If it hits, this is just a surrender. Yeah, well, GG's to my opponent. They played this well, but now they had the now they had the better team. I'll say that. No, not the better team, but it's definitely a very, very bad matchup for me. With, uh, with all the repulse shenanigans and, uh, and, you know, the damage shenanigans. I feel like even then they could have dealt, they could have done this a little bit better. Uh, by having gone for that earlier, like, just Wicked Slice into Dirk Stab onto my Flash, they could have dealt something like that. But, you know, they're still gonna win this, because there's... Is there any way I win? I mean, they still have two Exsanguinates. I have three, but... I'm not really gonna be able to use them. I might get very lucky with the Death Boiler Resistances. Clueless. I might get very lucky with the Death Boiler Resistance. It gets hit by a 25. Why am I not even surprised, I wonder? Well, that's gonna be a surrender, so GG's to my opponent, this is gonna come out to a 3 and 2, so not an amazing score, but I will say one of the most competent one-hour videos we've had so far, or at least one, one with the most competent opponents. So GG's to all of them, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers, and have, have a happy Valentine's Day.